there's something that uh, we need to talk about. Something very obvious going on, um, very serious, and it's this candle that's right behind me. See, my niece is sleeping in my office right now. They're in town, and that there is a Harry Styles candle. If you don't know who Harry Styles is, well, neither do I. But I am here to tell you 10 reasons why you should be moving to Oregon. We're going to be going through, you know, my experiences. I'm not a local. I am not born and raised in Oregon. So you'll have a different, uh, you know, opinions than the people born and raised here. And we're really going to dive deep into those pros, those cons, things that people like, things you don't like, so that you're going to have a good understanding of, should I freaking move to Oregon? If you want to learn that, we're getting after it right now. What's up, everybody? This is Jackson Wilkie with the Real Agent Now Group right here in the Portland Metro. If this is your first time to this channel and you want to learn everything about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play, and if you should move to Oregon, then make sure you tap that subscribe button. Click the bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. And we honestly get so many phone calls, emails, texts every day from people moving, relocating here. We absolutely love it. We've actually helped over 100 clients move from around the world to Portland, uh, and we absolutely love it. So if you want that help, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Days, nights, weekends, we got your back when moving to the Portland Metro. All right, so with that being said, I talk about the Portland Metro a lot. That's where the majority of our business and our team is, but at the same time, we have teammates in Bend, Oregon. We've helped clients, Salem, Oregon, uh, even the coast of Oregon. So that's what I want to talk about today. You're sitting there going, hmm. Should I move my butt to Oregon? I went through that same position a long time ago, and I'm here to tell you, it was a great move. There's things that I like. There's things I can't freaking stand. There's some things kind of going on politically. We won't talk about that, but there are 10 reasons that, hey, this place is pretty special, and I'm, gonna hear, I'm here to tell you. Number 10, it's just Oregon has such unique, different styles of living, and when we think about Oregon, we typically move ourselves all the way up to Portland, which is, you know, where we're... Uh, anchored here. But, you know, just outside of here, there's so much unique living. Within five to 10 miles of downtown Portland, Oregon, you can be in the middle of nowhere. I tend to be a little bit more of the, the redneck style. I like to hunt, I like to fish, and I can go steelhead fishing, elk hunting, deer hunt. I can do it all really relatively close within an hour or two of, you know, home base. But, with the different styles of living and, and why, you know, moving to Oregon can be special is that we really always just look at the news and we look at downtown Portland, Oregon as that is it. This place is incredible. We're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, just how incredible and beautiful the place is, but there's all different styles of living. We have people calling us from all around the world. Do you think they all want to live downtown Portland? No. In fact, nobody has really even moved there. We've helped a couple people. That's kind of their lifestyle. But for the most part, it's people moving, wanting a little bit more space, you know, wanting more country living, wanting more suburban style living, wanting condo living, wanting, you know, rural living, whatever that is, we're helping people. But the beautiful thing about Oregon is within, you know, an hour in any direction, you can have any style of living that you want. Number nine this is actually viewed as the silicon forest now out to the west side of portland oregon is hillsborough oregon and i remember even moving here not too long ago and hillsborough was just kind of this older part of town right they were just starting to build some construction out there and there was nothing really new going on well that has absolutely changed now local residents of hillsborough have said no it's been changing for decades right but in the opinion of you know me coming here you know about five years ago you start noticing drastic changes in just the last two years. Not every, but just the majority of these massive tech companies are moving out to the west side of Portland, Oregon. Affordable cost of living. You've got incredible you know, colleges around that supplying these job forces with great workers. And you also have right next door, you've got the headquarters of Nike. So they're starting to build massive amounts of new construction out to the west side of Portland in an area called Hillsboro. And that is one of the fastest growing cities with the highest appreciation that we saw in almost all the entire Portland metro, which is crazy to think. So the Silicon Forest and the jobs that are here and then comparative to, you know, California, Seattle, we are, you know, not only half, but, you know, a third or a quarter of the price of living compared to those other major Western cities. So that is a massive reason that you should Think about, you know, moving to Oregon. 
Number eight on the list, there is no sales tax in the state of Oregon. That was one of the weirdest things for me to get used to. You go up to this counter or to the counter, you see a price, you pay that price, right? If that brewski is three dollars and seventy nine cents, that's what you pay. Uh, so no sales tax is an added advantage. So here's one thing I want to note: if you're going to, you know, decide between Washington or Oregon, we get this all the time. They're like, well, I'm just going to kind of live up in Washington, and then I'll work down in Oregon, and then I'll pay no uh, state income tax because I live up there. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. You have to actually live in the state that you uh, work in, and that's where you're going to be paying taxes. So if you did that, you'd still have to pay Oregon income state taxes. So I will be brutally honest. They're a little bit higher. They're in fact quite a bit higher. So um, no sales tax is 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 great, but you know that the income tax levels in Oregon can be a little bit higher. So if you are wanting to really avoid that, you know sometimes we see people you know nearing retirement in retirement liking to go up north of the uh, state line there because of those benefits of no state income tax. So again, these are all conversations that we have: location, price, um, and just lifestyles to to you know place you in the right spot. The number, let's see, where are we at? Seven on the list is the four seasons. Um, I won't say <laughs> that it's an actual four season, you know, compared to where I'm from in North Idaho, where I believe that's four seasons. You can have like eight feet of snow in, in the wintertime and in the summer, it's 116 degrees. Last summer during Ironman, um, you're going to see drastic changes. But yes, you will see a, a real definitive four seasons in Portland, Oregon. It's rain, light rain, heavy rain, and no rain. Well, with sprinkle in the morning. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but summer times, it, it's actually pretty surprising. People come here and they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that it actually gets that hot here. In fact, I remember like two summers ago, we had a stretch of like 20 plus days in the 90s. It was hot a lot. So you got to be able to find, you know, those shady trails. And that's the cool thing about um, the, the the Portland Metro, even just within miles, you can find so many cool hiking trails that even in the summer, you're completely covered with a like a whole roof of trees so you know you can get into that shade quickly springtime uh you know fall time this is really what people who are from the northwest love it's crazy we, we can't wait for summer and that beautiful you know the water the lakes and then all of a sudden after a few weeks we're like yeah it's hot here i'm ready for you know the, the hoodies and the football weather um, we really enjoy kind of the approach of the new season it's something you'll hear from a lot of locals and, and people from the northwest is just like all right, I've had four weeks of this, you know, uh, season. I'm kind of ready for the next one. And then all of a sudden football weather hits and you're in your hoodie for four or five weeks. You're like, man, I could use some heat again. Um, but the winters in Oregon, they're typically not that, that bad. You're not going to see a lot of snowfall, maybe up higher, you know, and, and then obviously the cool part, you know, within an hour and a half, you got Mount hood, you're going to have incredible skiing. So, um, you get to kind of enjoy year round weather. I believe for me personally being raised, you know, up in North Idaho, that is a lot of snow here. They get like a half an inch. The town goes absolutely berserk, but you will see a little bit lower temperatures. I just like that you can basically be outside year round in Oregon. But the other aspect of that, you know, with the 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 rain and all the the water and the four seasons, that does bring springtime. That is when you start seeing all of the blossoming, all of the blooming, whatever you want to call. It. I mean, there's tulip festivals, there's every kind of festival. That's when the farmers markets just go crazy. It's really cool to see springtime. And the other perspective of that too is is we get a lot of people moving from warmer states. They've done it their whole life. They're just tired of sun every day. They're tired of heat every day, and they are ecstatic about you know putting on the hoodie having a little bit of rain some change and so it's a nice little switch when springtime hits you'll catch those 60 to 80 degree days you're gonna have some rainy gray days as well um but it's it's like this excitement level it just rejuvenates you it gets you so excited to go outdoors again and get to the farmer's market so having those changes can really kind of make life a little more exciting okay so number six on the list is going to be the breathtaking beauty that's what everybody wants in the northwest is just just to be able to get out and to see all of that beauty so this is one thing that you know portland oregon i was moving here more uh for opportunity better you know paying jobs and from where i was from right and a lot more opportunity and i thought i would kind of be leaving that whole north idaho the mountains the trees the lakes and i will agree you know the access to the lakes there was a lot easier but Man, the accessibility to so many cool things in Oregon has completely shocked me. There's over 360 miles of coastal, you know, beach along the Oregon coast. I've driven that highway up and down there. It is 
probably one of the most like top bucket items that people need to do and see. Sometimes you're like a thousand feet up in the air. It feels like overlooking the ocean. Sometimes you're driving right on the beach. Um, it is really a, a cool spectacle to see. You also have the tallest mountain range, you know, in the state of Oregon, right there outside of Portland, which is Mount Hood for incredible skiing. Even in the summertime, just going and cruising over those passes. There's a lot of actual lakes up there. In fact, one time me and the kiddos, uh, the wife had a, a trip one time. So I took my two older kids. We literally just took the pickup. We cruised up to some of these campgrounds. You pay 20 bucks to stay. You get your own fire pit. We were in the middle of the National Forest swimming and fishing, catching big old rainbow trout right out of this lake. It was it was awesome. That is anywhere you look. Right in town of Portland, Oregon, there's incredible um, you know, flyers and maps that you can get that show all the trail systems. We have the largest park inside of uh, city limits, which is Forest Park up in northwest Portland, Oregon. And again, I'm just talking about the Portland area. You really get anywhere. That drive from from Portland to Bend, Oregon. Bend, Oregon has an incredible river that you can float. We've, we've gone there. You get the tubes. You float down the river. There's breweries right there. There's concert venues. That's Oregon. I mean, if you get bored in Oregon, you don't like the outdoors. That is the outdoors uh, a paradise. There's just basically anything that you could ever think to do outside. Uh, in the state of Oregon. Hey, if you've been enjoying any of these videos and they've helped you with your decision to move to Oregon, would you do me a favor, hit that like button. It encourages us to keep putting out content that helps you with your move to the state of Oregon. And if you haven't yet and you wanna learn everything about Oregon, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Number five on the list, this should be the number one reason, the brewskis, baby. I came to uh, Oregon. Okay, I'll never forget it. I am a North Idaho redneck. I drink light beer. That's just the way I've grown up. I was chugging natties, Keystone Lights. Hey, it's just what we did, right? I remember moving into the neighborhood that I was into, and there was three dads there that worked for breweries or distributors, and they started handing me these things called IPAs, right? Obviously, I knew what one was, but I started kind of having those, and at first, I'm like, oh, God, that's terrible, but you kind of build that palate. I'm an absolute beer snob now. I know all the hops. I go to a place called John's, John's Market in Multnomah Village. If you're a beer snob, look up John's Market in Multnomah Village. You go there, it looks like the most rundown gas station ever. You will thank me up and down for this recommendation. There's over 5,000 beers. It's changed out almost every day. Every single beer in there can be bought individually. I will go there and spend $100 on just individual beers. Then me and my neighbors, we just split them and share them, and we just kind of beer snob it, right? It's the Mecca, right? So you're going to have so many different breweries. And here's the other thing that I love about that. With all the nature and the hiking, I, I usually get on the map. I find a new trailhead. Me and the wife and the three kids, we go and we just do a simple little hike. You know, we really enjoy that. Take our pictures, go have fun. And then we find a new brewery. We go in there and we judge the breweries on their pretzels. So you breweries out there, make sure your pretzel game is 100 because we're coming, right? I like those big pretzels, the size of, you know, twice the size of your head, some good cheese dip, and it better not be burnt, right? So um, we love doing that. It's something that's fun. Most of the breweries around here are kid-friendly. They do have some that are not kid-friendly so that the people who don't want all the kids like mine, you know, going around freaking out, <laughs> hanging out, uh, then, then you won't be bothered by that. So they even have some, hey, bring your dogs, bring your pets. Pretty cool. Number four on the list is don't worry if you're not a beer snob. It's for the winos too. Uh, basically, in any direction you go, within about 10 minutes, you're going to run into a winery. Um, just outside of the Portland Metro alone, there's wine tours. It's something that is very popular, not just like with the women. It is like men, women, parties, batch parties, whatever. They have buses. They take you around. There's tours. There's hundreds of these. Again, I got kiddos, so I always have to think about them. You can go up to these wineries, you know, take the tours, you know, have have a couple of glasses, whatever. One of you stays sober and they have slides. They got picnic areas. The kids have a blast. Like this is an area that they, they want you outside. They want you to bring family. They want you to have fun. And it's also they're going to have the private events, too, and super high end. Here's the sneaky thing that I think you need to know about Oregon. Uh, they're going to have a lot of like speakeasies, wine clubs, beer clubs, you know, uh, liquor clubs, whatever. You kind of have to know the no to get in. But these are like key fob. And obviously we're thinking about, you know, uh, speakeasies and stuff. But no, these are actually like just social clubs that you can pay memberships to. So if that's something that interests you, you're going to find that here. And it's an incredible way to network. So I know a lot of work functions and stuff that happens at those. I've, I've been in them. There's a lot of that opportunity. But for the people who love wine, you're going to see some of the best wineries and wine that you'll find in the country. 
Number three on the list, we've talked about this in a lot of the videos, Oregon is the third bike friendliest state in the country. Had to get that right. Um, statistics are not, hey, I'm telling you right now, people live on bikes. And that's really, you're not going to see it as much on the west side. You'll see people riding bikes everywhere. But the, the main like Portland metro, right? Like the northeast, southeast Portland, downtown Portland. There's over like 300 miles of bike lanes just in downtown Portland alone. Everywhere you go. In fact, downtown when you drive, there's the, the two lanes, north, south, east, west. And then there's bike lanes next to them. So you always have to be on the lookout if bike riding to work is your thing. And here, here's the crazy thing. We've actually had a ton of clients show up and, you know, they always, they think in their mind, okay, I like this area and that area. And I was touring this guy one time and he started talking. He goes, yeah, man, I love just being able to go out of the house and, and you know, go do a great ride, 10, 15, 20 mile ride. I'm like, geez, that's a long ride <laughs> uh, for me anyways. And, and they're like, you know, challenging and that's, and I was like, Okay. You know, and they started kind of telling me about the how I'm like, Hey, can I take you to an area? Again, this is what we specialize in. If we just hear two, three things you like, you don't like uh, specialty, like we can place you on the exact street. That's going to fit you perfectly. So I took him in to Multnomah village, that area I was talking about. And his eyes just went, Oh my God, this is the dream spot. I didn't even know this place existed. It's more hilly that the closer you get into downtown from the West side, inside kind of that loop there of like 26 um you're gonna find a lot of hills a lot of windy roads and he's like this this would be my house like i could literally just get out of my my house in the day take my bike go on long roads that are challenging and hilly and then you have tryon uh park right there that, that feeds down into lake oswego which is just trails and trails and trails um, that was something that you know he absolutely loved people love running on those to get the challenge so Again, if you're not a bike rider or a runner and you don't want that, tell me what you do like. We will help you. But um, that is the one thing about it. It's super bike friendly. You're going to see people everywhere on bikes. Number two on the list is going to be that cost of living. Again, you know, comparatively to the other major Western cities, we're considerably cheaper, right? You know, a third of the price of California, at least half the price of Seattle. Um, and, you know, to the locals and, and people been living here for a while, I understand it. It's been going crazy. We're seeing 15, 20, 25, 30% appreciation. And it's just going crazy. I was talking to one of the top economists uh, last year. It's actually on this channel from about a year and a half ago. And he was saying that Portland, Oregon could have another seven or could hold another 700,000 residents, which is crazy to think about. But with Silicon Forest and everything coming, um, you know, those prices are starting to cre increase. But, you know, a comparative, comparatively to the other larger cities with the highest paying jobs, in fact, Hillsborough, Oregon being that the most affordable city to live in the state of Oregon due to the high income of the jobs and the lower prices of homes, it does make it more affordable. That's not for everybody. I totally understand that. But that is one thing that you need to factor in is, you know, quality of life and, and, and cost of living. And when it comes to any major city on the west side, you know, Oregon, especially Portland in that matter, is going to be more affordable. It really boils down to lifestyle. But the number one reason you should move to Oregon is because you want to. It's a life decision. Is this a fit or not? I don't know. You know, it was for me. It was. It is for thousands and thousands of people. Moving's not easy, trust me, but it is one of the most rewarding. And when you can move to a state that provides everything that you could need, you know, from higher paying jobs, incredible outdoor activity, and also some of the nicest freaking people that you'll ever meet, then maybe it is a fit. But moving here can be dang hard. I'm telling you that right now. You got to have people that you can trust, that you know, and that's what we do. I told you at the beginning, we've helped over a hundred different families, clients move here. We're dang good at what we do. We help you. We jump on a Zoom. We go through areas. We know a couple areas you like, you don't like. We want to know your story. We don't want you getting here and having a bad time. So the only way that we can help you move to the state of Oregon is you've got to reach out. You got to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Days, nights, weekends, we got your back when moving to the Portland Metro. And until the next video, we'll catch you later.